Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfortest me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this celebrating the life of our dear Sister Anne Mo. And it's never easy conducting a funeral for someone you've worked with over the years and been quite close to. But that's the path we all have to travel. We're not going to hear our sister's voice anymore. But we loved her. And I'll miss her, her quiet spirit. Amen. She was a wonderful sister in the Lord. Praise be to God. Praise be unto God. Amen. And so we welcome you all here. Welcome you all the ministers. Welcome the ministers from Ruach as well. Pastor Wade. And so those who are watching, welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Mo was part of a praise and worship team for many years. And so we're just going to have some praise and worship. So I'll invite some of the praise and worship team members to come and lead us in a time of worship. Amen. I will miss Sister Mo. Amen. It's a privilege and it's an honor to be here to celebrate the life of Sister Moore, Mommy Moore, some of us call her. When she would come up here to lead worship or she'd be in worship, she'd be unhindered in her expression of love and adoration for the Lord. Unhindered, unrestricted. And you would know that this lady abides and dwells in the presence of the Lord. You would know it because she wouldn't care what you're doing out there. She'd be here just with her God and inviting you in that place with her. So today it's a privilege, it's an honor. We're going to sing some of the songs that she loved. As we worship the Lord, we invite you to just worship with us for her life and for all that she was to us. We give the Lord thanks this morning. Amen. We lift up the Lord, we enthrone the King.
funeral, but God is alive. Amen. Amen. Remain standing while we have our opening prayer. We call upon Kuchu Moore. For he has received his servant. I didn't want to write anything before I came here. I didn't want to plan anything. But I just said, as the spirit leads. And I thank God for my mother-in-law. I thank God for a grandmother. I thank God for Daddy Moore, your wife. We thank God for her life. That everything that she has impacted into us. We grab hold. She was a peacemaker, slow speaker. She had everything in her. All the gifts that everybody, sometimes we admire. I, I personally admired her. So now we're going to pray. We're going to give God the glory. We're going to give God the glory for her life. A wonderful woman. She was a wonderful woman. Amen. I've known this woman for about 15 years, more than 15 years, 20 years or so. This woman was a great woman, yeah. a great mother-in-law, yeah. best mother-in-law I've ever had. Yeah. And I thank God for her. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we're going to close our eyes and we're going to dedicate yes. today. Yes. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, with our open arms, with our thanksgiving before you. It's painful, but Father God, you don't see the pain. You just receive and you say everything that you created is good. In Genesis, that's what you said. It is good and it is well. And we thank God for your kindness, your mercy, everything that you have, all the gifts that you've given this lady. Father God, we thank her. We thank you for receiving her. Father, as we come before you, we dedicate this service before you because before we cannot do anything without you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise because you are the one that gives the ruach, the breath. And Father God, you are the one that takes and it's not a bad thing. But Father God, we give you glory for who you are. We thank you because you are God. We thank you because you are God. We thank you regardless of this moment. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your understanding. Through it all, you know it all. We thank you for those that know you. We thank you for those that are making a way. We thank you for your grace, the grace that you have in everything that you do. It is good. It is well. We thank you for the family members, her cousins, her husband, her sister-in-law, her nieces, her grandchildren. We thank you, oh God. Even the church members, the family members that she has engaged herself into. She dedicated her life before you. We thank you, oh God. For you know it all. We don't have the answers. You know the answers. For you are the creator of all. You are the alpha and omega. The beginning and the end. You know it all, Father. Father, we come before you. Through it all. You strengthen Kester. You strengthen Kevin. You strengthen everybody, oh God, at this moment. Daddy more, you strengthen him, oh God. For you will strengthen him, oh God. For every memory that she had. Every memory that we have about Mommy Moore. Father, we thank you. We had a good moment. We had good days yes, with her. Memories. Happy memories that, will, that has been planted in us. And we carry that mantle. We carry it and we run with it. That Mommy Moore, you will never be forgotten for your kindness and goodness. The heart that you had was all that anyone can have. And we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise, Father. We thank you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may have your seats. And we'll have our first scripture reading by um, Kayla Moore. He's going to come and read a portion from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Okay, so I'll be reading Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 8. 
to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, we'll invite Mr. Moses um, Sansk, Kevin and Kester to come and read the eulogy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all for being here to celebrate the life of our mom. And, well, I never really call her Anne, I call her Mama. <laughs> she was born on the 21st of November, 1950 to our grandfather, who, Daniel Job, who was a port worker and a foreman in Trinidad, and her mom, Lenora Simmons. She was the youngest of five. That includes Teddy, Agnes, Sylvia, who, who are passed away, unfortunately, and Hazel. This was a home birth she was born, and unfortunately, there was complications during that birth where her mom passed away during Birth. Obviously, this meant mom or Anne was left without a biological mom, but she made up for that. She probably purposed at such a young age to be the mother she couldn't have. She had a zeal for life and desire to progress. Uh, she had, due to her mom passing, there was a lot of fragmentation in her family. And her cousins and aunts and different maternal figures in the home became kind of a mom to her. Um, her, 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 her dad did marry, remarry, uh, and she had a stepmother who we came to know as grandmom until they told us well, she's not. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But she is. She is, she is. <laughs> yes, uh, and, um, you know, she's always someone who reached out beyond family. We all family, actually, in her eyes. Whether you met her or not, once you were connected to us, you were family. Um, you know, uh, she was integral in raising us as the young men we are today. Um, and she was a bit of a bookworm. Uh, in her days, I remember her spending long hours in the night studying, God knows what. But she had a degree in accounts while well, I was in Trinidad. I can't remember what year that, you might know more, more than me. Um, but um, she, she has spent her first half of her life as in Trinidad with a, a varying degrees of um, successes. She was working at the National Insurance Board uh, started as a simple clerk. Them times didn't have computers. But um, now, she, and she became a senior member of staff, and she was well known for her, her, her witty personality. Uh, I think at one time she was selling chana and nuts. Right. <laughs> yeah. Remember that, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> to, to make sure we had enough money to build, to finish, finish the house. <laughs> she was always entrepreneurial in her approach, uh, you know, uh, she, 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 she understood how to do it, and she really pushed, she, she literally built our houses. <laughs> we just kind of fell in line. Uh, and, uh, yeah, she built up long-lasting relationships with her colleagues at the NIB. That was a big part of her life. She always seemed to have a work life as a, a family life, because it was the same thing when she came over here and became a nurse. Uh, she showed such loyalty and uh, and such uh, 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 friendship, a deep friendship. Mother, I feel more of a motherly uh, 
approach to, 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 to dealing with everyone and that kind of, you know. She also, well, she was made redundant, funny enough, or she took redundancy. Yeah, she took voluntary redundancy in National Insurance Board and she didn't sit down. <laughs> she sold them sacopedias then. That's true. Yeah. We still, we still have one we upstairs. Still have we them. still have them upstairs. They're still upstairs. Yeah. Vintage, vintage. <laughs> she used to sell ex- Oh, my days. She started making pottery. Wow. And she decided to, be, to do a, a bachelor in theology. Huh? Yeah, she has a bachelor's degree in theology. And um, I think that when Pastor she did that preach at Dabidi at the time. Um, uh, and she was a... My parents were very active in the church. We literally grew up in the church, as as everyone knows. My par- my my dad was treasurer for for, for that for the for our church, and mom was a deacon, and and she was accountant as well. I think I don't know if you could correct me. Um, and um, again, it's, it was a family church. We had a bunch of families just running the church, and we, you know it was probably that ethos we had. Um, I'm talking too much. <laughs> can't help it. They can't help it. They can't help it. But as um, Kevin was saying, my mum was very much of a. Um, um, she went to Success um, Eleven to come to secondary school, where she excelled in whatever she put her hands to. And I think that 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 showed over the years. Just her worth ethic was just so great that you know whatever she puts her hands to, she just made it work. She just knew how to sacrifice, and also how to actually communicate her her love for people around her. Um, coming up from a broken home, her biggest thing was peace, let peace reign. Amen. She was always saying that, you know, whatever happens, let peace reign. Yes. Okay, and that's something that, you know, she instilled in us all the time. And, you know, she, she wished our family, because every family has problems, okay? Yeah. There's, there's no family that doesn't. And her family had a lot of problems you know, just being fractured as they were, but her desire was always to have peace. Amen. And even up to now, there are issues going on, but, you know, mm. they've learned to, to live in peace, and we all... I think it's, a, I think it's biblically important yeah. that we live in peace, as the Bible talks about, blessed oh, are the peacemakers, the for they shall inherit the kingdom yeah. of God. And that's something that we have sought to take on um, in terms of the career pathway again. She so that came up here. He was made also redundant. Why can't you be redundant, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, so yes, yes, it, it, it was, was, was right before the coup. It was a pr- it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a process, yeah, was and a God just led that to come up here. I would say it's God because nothing else, and um, and she followed because she's the digital wife. She is. And she dragged us along, but she didn't have to drag you. I came willing. You know what I'm coming. <laughs> but, you know, she chose to nursing and it fit her like a glove. And she became a super nurse. I will call it a super nurse because but she... First, but first, she got her third degree. There we go. The third so that was the third degree, yeah. The she, third degree. Third degree in nursing, she was always all about progressing yourself. Kevin, you need to not sit still. You have to progress. Yes, you have to improve always. yourself. Yes, always, always. And she, she, you know, she pushed herself. And I admire for it. I mean, I, wow. Um, and um, yeah, she, I remember we should spend, she do lots of bank at first. And then every Sunday she was going to, to church, to work every Sunday. Every Sunday we used to drop her to you know, drop her. Yeah, she would always find time to come to church. Oh yes. Always, you know, yes. even in the nights she would finish the night shift. Yes. Come straight to come church. Straight. Even Christmas Day she would like work the Christmas night and um, the night before Christmas. Yes. And come yes. straight and have yes. everything ready. I don't know how she did it. She was just amazing. Her spreads were. Oh. We literally fa- believed that the Gordon Hospital in was her second home. Yeah. <laughs> we still have the keys <laughs> and I can walk up to the Gordon Hospital and let myself in. <laughs> yeah, and I'll see you here. And more. Yeah. 
you know. When, whenever I visited, so I wasn't a nurse, unlike some people. Well, oh my gosh, it was like uh, a prince coming <laughs> to the castle. <laughs> it was amazing. Everyone was so wonderfully receptive of us whenever we were there, and that just bestowed the love that they had from my mother. An extension, us. yeah. It's just a total extension, and even at NIB also when we were young. Going there also. Yes, all those right. ladies were just doting over us. Yes. Even the security guards. Uh, but I think they were all they were, they were all having children, you know. They were all having children at that time. So you know what children have children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So yes, as you know, she had both of us, but mom actually was pregnant a third time, wasn't she? And unfortunately, it didn't come to pass. It could have been the sister, isn't it? I was meant to be the sister. Apparently. <laughs> I was meant to be. Apparently. The name was set out already. Oh. You know, they had everything ready. Kezi I was meant Kezian to be. or something, was it? Uh, Keisha, Keisha, Keisha. 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 It was Keisha. Okay, it was Keisha. So Keisha, Keisha. I've been told that many sense. times. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> I disappointed, unfortunately. Oh, we could never disappoint. Mom treated us equally. She'll buy one, she'll buy the other. I think we were literally almost twins. No, she was like the. She no, used to, uh, no, 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 no. Don't, no. don't, don't, don't even go there. There's no way. You will get the expensive things. <laughs> I will get the hand me downs. No. Okay. <laughs> right. It wasn't always like that. I had to be the one to be like, okay. No problem, thank you. Okay, but I'm the oldest. We, what do you expect? Well, Come on now. well, you know, the first, the last. Hallelujah. <laughs> but so mom I, took us on many holidays. She would love to travel. Oh my days, that lady traveled. Do you think she hasn't gone? Is down under? Yes, that's, that's the only place she probably hasn't here, and and maybe Asia or something. But she, I think, going to Israel. Going to Jerusalem was one of her biggest. Yeah, she went twice as well. Yeah, biggest accomplishment. She dreamt about doing that. Go, go, go to Israel, by the way. You just need to understand it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But mom has been, you know, she went through the miry with us. When I came up here, it was so difficult for me, especially because we. I wasn't, I wasn't considered dependent in the eyes of the law, so I didn't have like my status. And it was such a difficult time um, when my mom was there with me in front of the, in the home office to get my status sorted. And she's the one that encouraged me to become a nurse. I didn't want to do nursing. I want to be like an architect or something. Isn't it? IT specialist. IT spe I, I'm still, I'm still one, by the way. Let's check my LinkedIn. Um, so, um, yeah, um, you know, she, she, she's was always my biggest champion. She knew it was difficult for me, and uh, and she was, you know, when I used to apply for jobs, she would be with me doing the applications. You know, my wedding, she was instrumental in that. It was a beautiful day. She was, she 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 made it. She made it happen, <laughs> and she was a constant guide to myself and my wife when we had our trials and our trap, our, our different going throughs. Very insightful conversations we spent because we we traveled together. Actually, we ended up traveling together quite a lot, me and mom, and um, we would have lovely conversations. I remember our long conversations on the plane. We would just talk about life really got to know my mom in a more, you know, very, very intimate way. And, um, you know, it's something that I always hold dear to my heart and I remember her by. And it's always going to be my desire to be that example she set me out to be. To forgive, to let go of stuff, to not hold grudges against people. Yes, people will upset you, but it doesn't mean that you have to hold a grudge and carry the weight. Leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. Let go and let God. Yeah. Um, I have a similar recollection of my mother. 
um, I'm a bit different to Kevin because I'm the second one. I'm the better one. So, um, yeah. But I was the first to leave home. The first to get married. The, f the first to give her a grandchild. Okay? I'm not going to kind of okay. compete with that. Right? At all. So, um, Hallelujah. one of the greatest pictures that I have of her is her holding her newly, well, one year old granddaughter. The smile on her was amazing. You just, you just felt the love and the joy that she had within her, just holding her grandchild. I have that. <laughs> not you. You could have it. <laughs> okay. I had my turn as well, don't worry. <laughs> Um, similarly to my wedding, uh, on my wedding, um, we had a massive hiccup where our caterers kind of pulled out last minute. And my mom just said, you know what, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's make it happen. And she did it. Did all the catering. Yeah. Uh, Mother-in-law. forgot about that. She did the cake. Yeah. It was all hands on deck. Where is your mother? She's right there. Okay. <laughs> we do not be back there. That's my mother. She just got in when my daughter was born unexpectedly at home. Very unexpectedly. Um, we were running around. Grandmas came and they sorted everything out for us. Took all of our pressures away. You know, we could just focus on our daughter. That's it. She needs that's what she was. Yeah. She was there when we needed her. She, I cannot regret. You know, sometimes someone dies and you think, oh, what? We should have done this. Or we could have done that. And we should have done that. I, I cannot, I can't find anything I've missed. For someone of 72, two, two years of age. 73. Yeah, 73. Yeah. Sorry. She lived a full life. No regrets. That's, that's an amazing example. That we die empty. I would say, I'll call it that. Because she did everything she could have, should have, would have, times two. More and more and more. And, and she will continue... Because her legacy lives in her grandkids. Her legacy lives in you. Her legacy lives in how we carry ourselves. Because, yeah, you know, you know what's, what is worth it? I mean. But for us, the biggest thing is, you know, okay. when people speak about my mother, they always say she is a great cook, massively good. Her world famous barbecues. Oh, if anyone's that. been there, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I say she feeds you 10,000. Um, but um, she's always pleasant, always jovial. That's yeah. the, the feedback that we always get. You know, always welcome into any stranger. You take, yeah, mm -hmm. and her smile. <laughs> Everybody remember her smile, as I said before. It's a big picture there, so there you go. Yeah. As I said, she, um, she came on my 21st birthday party trip. <laughs> Yeah, it was a party trip. It was a party trip, you know. Me and two friends, um, two two other friends. Uh, my mom was there, you know. <laughs> she, she she loved. She, to she literally connect. She connected yes. with young people. Exactly. You know, there was no one else. She didn't. She didn't rock. The, she rocked the party. She exactly. was. She was the party. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, we've been to Paris, Rene and I, with my mom. Mm. Uh, again, going everywhere, going to rides, doing all the stuff, going all the um, yes. excursions, everything. Yes. You know? I would remember our cruises. Ah, uh, the cruises, the cruises. With Judy, the cruises. And Mandy and Paul. And we all remember Symphony of the Seas. Wow. That's all I could remember and, and, and the Carnival Vista, by the way. You must cruise in your life. You know? Cruise in your life. You will, you will live again. Um, she, 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 she really enjoyed being with us, no matter where we were. Um, and again, 
that's something we will always remember her by. And should we just bring it down to the end a bit? Go on. Okay, so um, unbeknown to all of us who cared for Anne, retirement and the closure of the Gordon came right before COVID and the, and the restrictions that, that it brought. Um, really impacted her. These severe restrictions, yeah, they just, we didn't realize because obviously my mom had a very outgoing personality and now to be pretty much locked down, it, it really affected her psyche more than we thought. Far more. You know. um, she had lost a little weight over that period unexpectedly and we were just thinking, okay, something's like... You, you just couldn't put a finger in it. No. Um, originally, um, initially she was happy with her weight loss because she was like, oh, you, um, you know you... Uh, yeah, she was always been wanting to live who's late for years and years. Yeah. But, um, but then it became a big um, point of concern for us. Yeah. So over the last, well, over two years, we were doing multiple tests trying to figure out what was going on, what was happening, why it is that she was yeah. losing the weight, what was, what was, you know, and she was getting more frail. Her mobility was going down. Yeah, she was just coming more and more arched. Hunched over. Yeah, hunched. Um, and at one point, we thought it was cancer. So we were like, okay, fine, fair enough, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's go, but that was, that was, that was ruled out. It, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't that. No. Um, but then she had a fall in September 22, which really then starts the chain reaction of everything that happened afterwards. Yeah. And um, we had one last meeting as a family. Yeah. Um, was we hadn't had one for many years due to our responsibilities, families, but we had one more. And, yeah. and then after that, she, um, she became very unwell after that. Yeah. Very difficult Towards time. the end, her love for her family in Christ and yeah. singing came out in abundance. It was like that was just that she held on to. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, she had she 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 was diagnosed with dementia earlier this year. Unspecified apparently. Unspecified dementia. But even when her when she's not lucid, when she's talking about Christ, it was Pinpoint. Yeah, she Accurate. was always she very was, you know, alert and yeah. fluent when her when it came to the things of Christ. Yeah. Songs, what what, what suited her was the songs. We had yeah. music in her room. And she so, loved. She and loved it. She loved it to bits, yeah. and that love for Christ. But she also told us off, by the way. Yeah. Serve Christ. Serve Christ. But also, one thing that people didn't realize: she was worried about other other people. Even very. though she was sick, she would be praying for you praying for that one, praying for the other one, mm -hmm. you know, concerned about other people other than her. And it was never about her. And many times I'm saying, Mom, we're, all, we're fine. Yeah. We're okay. You see about yourself. She's like, no, 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 no. This one needs me. I need to do this. I need to do that. It was that motherly love in her that just always came out. And I always say people's true personalities come out when the chips are down. When, you know, their back's against the wall. When there's no... You know, their, their, their true self comes out, and my mom's true self came out, and I was like, wow. She still used to think she was doing shifts. So she kept asking me, you didn't have shift? I was like, no. Was like, but work, work was still quite there. It, it was It was in the mind. It was definitely in the mind, but someone else in the mind also was Danielle Job. Yeah, and she really, really loved her dad. I didn't appreciate how much she did. Um... But like all of us, our parents are very, very dear to us. And my mom, our mom, sorry. Mama. Our mom. She has been very dear to not only us, to our extended family. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To all of you guys. And we share, you share our pain. You share our loss. But as we say, yes. you know, she taught us well. Yes. She was a very good example of someone. And she bestowed a lot of qualities not only in myself but in everyone else that 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 came in her in her existence just yeah. to know her yeah, she's gone and not forgotten the spirit lives with us lives within us thank you thank you everyone thank you. thank you very much kevin uh, Kester for your real in-depth insight.
to Sister Moore. Trinique has got a special tribute poem. And then we have a special from Shiloh Choir. My dear Aunt Tian was such a mighty lady with only kindness in her heart. Thinking of the love we had together just grows stronger even though we are now apart. Of all the gifts in the world, however big or small, to have had her as my prayer warrior was the most precious and greatest gift of all. I would always call you an Uncle Victor, sometimes with fear, disappointment and anger. But I remember you saying, Trinique, put your faith in God and stand strong. And do you know what, lovely people? That woman was never wrong. <laughs> Heaven needed an angel and God decided on you. He gave you your head on wings, so you did what you had to do. I will never forget the times your calming voice dropped me to school, and I used you as my resilient tool. To me, you are more than just an auntie, but a grandma, friend, mother, and now an angel too. Mm. To all my wonderful family and friends, they only gave me five minutes, so yeah. this poem has to come to an end. <laughs> but before I go, I would like my more crew to know. Bear with me. Darling Uncle Victor, Kevin, Kester, Janine, Kuchu, Kayla, Jaden, Annabelle, Micah, <laughs> Renee, not forgetting Auntie Elma and Jackie too. I know what my loving Auntie Anne would want me to say to you. The journey may be long, but you all must have faith in God and stand strong. Love, Trini. Thank you. Song, you got a song from over here? Special song?
congregational song now, King of King, Majesty. Amen. So please stand for this song, King of Kings, Majesty.
Rees Thomas, reading from the Psalms, 34. Psalms 34, 1 to 8. Followed by another scripture reading by Jaden. So please get ready. Jaden, you can both come. Hello, everyone. Amen. So you're easy. Yeah, yeah please. Um, I'll be reading Psalms 34, verse 1 to 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall fear of it and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked at him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and delivers them. I will taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Thank you, everyone. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we have um, Jaden now. He's reading 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. Reading 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will, ju will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved me disappearing. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you very much. The Apostle Paul talking about his departure. He sung it as though he was just about to catch a plane, yeah? And looking forward to landing and to be welcomed by those who would receive him. Amen. We have some tributes now. I'm Judy. As Judy, Sister Mandy's. And then followed by Pastor Gentle. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God for he is good. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall be continually in my mouth. Amen. Amen. And when the Bible says, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. And that scripture means so much. You know, Anne, my cousin, my dear cousin, she was a real worshipper. We spent a lot of time worshipping God and sharing time together. You know, um, it's important to share time and space not over the digital media it, it it misses something you lose the connection um with people but um and she was really my mother's first child um we are first cousin my uncle daniel was her um, father but mum looked after Anne after um her mother died shortly after she she gave birth to her as um for the first five years of her life, mum loved Anne dearly, and Anne loved my mother. But when um, things were a bit hard in the Caribbean and there was a call um, to come to England, my mother answered the call and she begged uncle to, um, to take Anne with her. Uh, and he said no. And at that point, her life really changed drastically and um, she would often sometimes speak of those hard years. Her personality was very similar to my mother. Um, her mantra was always to give up your rights for peace, which yeah. she always done. Often letting others dominate her and have their way so that peace, peace, Peace would abide. 
Anne was not a confrontational person. She was very wise and extremely, um, extremely strong in faith, but not only in faith, but in all manner of things, as her dear sons have said. But never, never ever mistake the softness, the gentleness, the caring for weakness. She was not a weak person. In fact, in order that you give up your rights for peace, you have to be incredibly strong. You have to know when to pull and when to push. Because sometimes circumstances tell you you have to push. Just like giving birth, Anne knew when to pull and when to push. She loved the Lord. And when I visited her, she would often pray and we would worship and laugh so much. On Sunday, first Sundays, we would have Sunday lunch. And we laughed her from beginning until end. I am so moved by her death. I cannot really explain to anybody how much I miss her. She meant so much to me. And at this point, I'll let Mandy talk about that they were birthday buddies. Yeah. Um, you know, with Kevin and Kester, they were saying that we, she loved holidaying and we would holiday quite a lot together through the cruises and what have you. But we, Anne and myself, shared a, a special birthday uh, month, I would say. And we were always used to celebrate together. And um, it was such a warm, welcoming feeling that we had that connection. And we would holiday around our birthdays times as well so that we could be together, that we could connect. Um, she's going to be missed so much, so, so much. She was truly inspirational. And her kindness and love for her friends, her family, the church, God, was so great. We loved her very much, and she will be dearly missed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. The next tribute is from Pastor Gentle. Pastor Gentle was the most pastor in Trinidad, and he's traveled all the way from Trinidad. Give him a welcome to come here today. Amen. Show us how much he, he loves them. Amen. Good. Good morning, everybody. Greetings from the best place on planet Earth. Thank you so very much. As I was listening intently to the expression, it reminded me in my mind some years, years ago, I read a story of this funeral was taking place. Uh, this woman, she had one daughter and um, her husband died and his friend came and gave tributes. And while listening attentively to the tribute, she says to her daughter, go open the coffin to see is that your daddy inside here. <laughs> but I'm glad everything that I heard, this is Anne, this is Anne. I know it is her. It describe in detail who she actually is in Jesus name. So ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, I stand before you today with a very heavy heart, but also with a sense of profound gratitude and appreciation for the life of our dearly beloved sister and mom. Though the shadow deepens and our hearts bleed, we gather here in humble celebration of her enduring legacy and the immeasurable impact she had on each and every one of us that is present today. Anne has been a very caring and dedicated friend to our family. We would have met Anne, Anne in the year 1994 when we graced the halls of the Diabetes Pentecostal Church to begin our pastorate there. Anne and her two boys would have been members of W Pentecostal Church, a relationship was established because life is about relationship. Yes. Yeah. Life is about what? Relationship. relationship. Because you would meet some people who are good and some people who are good to stay away from. 
Look at your neighbor and says, neighbor, are you that one or should I look for another? <laughs> this relationship strengthened when Anne and the boys migrated to London. We would become tenants at their home at Bregan Park. Anne would always be in touch, finding out how everybody was going. She went to great lengths to call, to bless, encourage, and just be a good friend and sister. She, along with the family, would grow to be just like a family. Anne was a warm, loving, caring, and generous friend. Her home became our home whenever we came to London, and her home became her home when she visited Trinidad and Tobago. We had sweet times of fellowship, wonderful trips to the beach. In fact, I have the pleasure of carrying her for her last trip at Marcus Bay for Bacon Shark. <laughs> we were sure to receive every Christmas a Christmas card, daily greeting via WhatsApp, and we always look forward to visit uh, from her family whenever they came to Trinidad. And indeed has fought a good fight. She has finished her course, and she has left a shining example of being a genuine, kind, loving friend and sister and a good example of believer in Christ. Rest in peace, Anne. We look forward to that great reunion in the sky one day. She walked the path laid out before her with unwavering faith and strength. Though she may have faced countless trials and tribulations, she met them, she greeted them, and she beat them all. Whether it was at church, at home, with family or friends, or in the community, offering a helping hand, her actions were always guided by love, humility, and the fear of the Lord. She was a constant source of encouragement for all those around her to serve God and remain faithful even in the face of adversity. Yeah. She was a woman who had a deep respect for the church and its leadership. She understood the importance of unity and harmony within the church and worked diligently to foster a peaceful and loving environment. It was such admirable qualities that made her a cherished friend and respected member of our church community back home. What an amazing woman she was. She was a beacon of light to everyone. She encountered always wearing a warm smile and carrying a heart full of love. Her laugh was so joyous, it was infectiously contagious. You couldn't stay sad around her. One of the qualities that, Anne, that defined Anne more was her sacrificial living. She gave sacrificially of herself, of her treasure, of her time. I admire her because of her gentle manners, her hunger for success, and her ambitions too. So today, even in the midst of unspeakable pain, there is an undying hope, a hidden reservoir of strength provided by our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we grieve the loss of a true servant of God, we must always strive to embody the same hope and faith in our life. There is so much to say about our sister Anne, but for time and short of appropriate words to describe such an amazing woman, an industrious gem of a woman. A Proverbs 31 woman. As we bid farewell to a life well lived, let us carry forward Anne's legacy by embracing love, laughter, kindness, compassion, and resilience in our own lives. Though she is no longer with us in body, her spirit will continue to inspire and uplift us. May we find comfort and unity in the knowledge that Anne Moore our dear sister in Christ has returned home to our Heavenly Father. Maybe perhaps if God had given me the opportunity to talk to her right now and I say, Anne, would you want to come back home? What would be the answer? What would be the answer? Yes. So she would say, Victor, I love you. 
Just tell Victoria, I love you. Tell Kevin and Kess, I love you, but I'm not coming back. Because she's in a better place. Yeah. We all pray that God will heal her. Well, God, I've heard that prayer. She's totally, completely healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, her enduring works of love and service will continue to inspire our own spiritual journeys for countless days to come. Farewell, mighty woman of God. Amen. You serve well. Your light and love will forever be a beacon of hope and inspiration to us all. We have no doubt you are with your Lord rejoicing in heaven, embraced by his loving arms of our Savior. And we look forward to the day when we will be reunited with you in God's presence. So, daughter of Zion, rest in peace, our friend, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. To Victor and Kevin, and Kester, and the grandchildren, and the daughter-in-law. I know you will miss her, but she has left a legacy of good Christian conduct and lifestyle for all of you to follow. As you take the battle, live, love, and carry on this legacy as you continue to impact your generation. God bless you all richly. Love you guys, and our prayers are with you at this time. Please accept our heartful condolence for your loss. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Gentle. Amen. All the way from Trinidad. Sister Josie Ann Flood is going to come and do a solo at this time. Oh, 
Fellowship, the sister Mo used to participate in all of our different services, and so they send their greetings to you, Brother Mo. God cares for you, we care for you, we love you. The songwriter once asked the question, Does Jesus care? And he answers the he answers his question, saying, Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. He's touched with our grief. Praise be unto God. As I've said, I miss Sister Mo. She continued coming up here and praise even when she was bent over. She carried on to the very end. Oh, praise the Lord. She was a faithful soldier for the Lord. Amen. Give God thanks. Amen. Amen. In the time, allowed, I've only got a, a couple of verses to call your attention to today. John 14, he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also, why? Because in my father's house, there were many mansions. If it was not so, my topic today is Jesus has plans for you. Jesus has plans for you. You know, we cannot really even trust our own self or anybody else for that matter. But Jesus is saying here that you can trust him. You can depend upon him because he's going to prepare a place for you. And so he says that he has plans for you. Amen. And not only that, he's got plans for you, but he's going to personally implement those plans and come again and receive you. What else do we need to know? When Jesus says, I am going to personally implement those plans and come back for you because what Jesus really wants is for you to be with him for where he is he says you may be also and that is more or less the backbone of those verses from John chapter 14 now what he's saying we may consider it to be um, a mystical and a very sublime truth Considering which we will not have the complete picture until we get to heaven, I guess. But he says that there is a place called my father's house. Somewhere in the universe, there is a place called my father's house. Amen. Somewhere in the great beyond, somewhere in the universe, the Father's house is where the government of the universe is located and all the universe beyond. And so, you know, what text says that in that particular area, Jesus says, I have different places, lots of rooms, plenty of rooms in my Father's house. There's a song that says that. Amen. But Jesus says, I have got a special place for you. Amen. This tells me that God has a plan for you not only in this life, but that God has a plan for you in the other life, in eternity, wherever our sister is at this moment. Amen. God has a plan for you beyond the grave. Amen. How about that? God has a plan for you in this life. We are told in all our ways, acknowledge you and he will direct your path. But not only in this life. Going beyond this life. Amen. Yes, yes. 
In God's eternity, yes. God has plans for you. Amen. Yes. And to any believer who has been bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. any believer who believes that God Christ died, was buried, and that he rose again. Amen. Yes. He has plans for you yes. as an individual. Amen. Amen. You, as an individual who has been saved by the matchless grace of God. Amen. Amen. And because you have done that, you have accepted him, you have become a valuable person. Yeah, in that context, you have become a valuable and there is a special place and there is a future for you in my father's house. Yes. Amen. Now I know that people have often fantasized about people who have been specially faithful in this life we sort of fantasize and says that they're going to have a big mansion yeah as compared to those even though that they were Christians but they've lived a very self-centered life they've lived a very selfish life and they've lived a very disobedient life and we are told that they're not going to have such a big mansion. Amen. There is a story which I heard once about a lady who was rich in this life. God blessed her. She was blessed with wealth. And she had servants and she had maids and so forth. And when she died, she was looking forward to her big mansion. And when she got there, she found out that she only had a, a little shanty cabin in heaven. And just down the street from her, there was a, a glittering mansion. And she asked who lives there. And she was told that it was her maid. Amen. She was told that the glittering mansion belonged to her maid and she could not understand why she just had a little shanty cabin and the maid had the glittering mansion amen and she wanted to know the answer and the reason given was we used all the materials you sent over and that is all that we could find we used up all the material that you sent and that's all that we can find to build you this cabin. Then Jesus says that we ought to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven that cannot be corrupted by rust and moth. And he says to be rich towards God is how the Bible describes it. Well, remember I said it was a story and it's just fantasize, yeah? Because we don't really know exactly what it is. But if God has promised that it's going to be good, I really believe it and I take. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is a specific place or a specific area in heaven which is yours to occupy because you belong to Jesus. You are his. Amen. All oh, the hope that you and I have for life beyond the grave. I like what Job says. He says, I know that my Redeemer liveth yes. and that he shall stand on the latter day upon this earth. Yes. And though worms destroy this body, amen. Yes. Yes. Ah, but I'm going to see him for myself yes. and my eyes shall see him and not another. Though my reins are consumed within me. Amen. Amen. Jesus said that God is the God of the living and not the dead. Amen. Amen. But you and I have this wonderful prospect. We will be given that resurrection body. Yes. Sister Mo. Amen. A body that is adapted to glory. Yes. A body that is adapted to living in the rarefied atmosphere of heaven. And still recognizable as you and you are. We are going to know our sister more again. 
We're going to see her as she is. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We will have a resurrection body uh, that will be recognizable because we are going to be real persons. Amen. Yes. And Jesus says, I have got a place prepared for you. Amen. Oh. I believe we'll have an address. Amen. 111 Glory Avenue. Open that. Amen. Amen. That might be your address. 111 Glory Avenue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's a place in the Father's house. Praise the Lord. He says, I go and prepare a place for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that blessed home yes. beyond yonder. Amen. Yes, Where God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. The heartbreaks and the frustrations that we make us cry. And we weep over many times. It will all be done. Amen. You will have joy that doesn't have any bite to it. Amen. You will have joy that don't have no bite to it. Amen. You know, it doesn't matter what occasion we have here. It could be a happy occasion. But there's always some bite to it. Amen. To make us think. But in my father's house. Amen. Hallelujah. There will be a hundred percent joy. Amen. Amen. A hundred percent joy. Amen. We are talking here about those who know the Lord Jesus Christ. He has prepared a mansion for them. You know in that same chapter 14. Romans chapter 1 tells us that there is a God. We can know that there is a God. By just even just looking at creation. Uh, and looking at the universe. Yes, you can tell that there is a God. Uh, there is a way. Jesus said, I am the way. Christ is the way. Amen. I know we live in a world that there have been many devious pathways dreamed up by people who thought that might lead them to an experience with God. Amen. Currently in a world We've got a plague of drugs which has flooded our nation and the world. Amen. There's also a lot of satanic worship going on in this world. Now why am I saying this? Because it has grown because of the question of how, how can I find God? Amen. Now the devil's business has always been to suggest an alternative. Amen. That happened in the Garden of Eden. We all know what happened there. Satan said, you shall not surely die, but you shall become like gods. Amen. He gave a half, half truth and he gave a half lie. And our mother Eve fell for it. And we have suffered ever since. Amen. Oh yes, there have been a lot of alternatives offered. But Jesus says, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one come to the Father but by me. Sister Anne made that her choice in her young life. Amen. And she continued faithfully to the end. Amen. And so the devil's scheme, the devil's ploy is to always offer an alternative to outright obedience to God. Amen. He always will tell you that there is an easy way. But that way will always lead to death. It will always lead to disappointment. It's always the way of tragedy. How can we know the way? The question was asked. And the way is the person. The way is the Lord Jesus Christ. I would say to you today, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, like our sister was, don't fall for the alternatives that Satan can suggest to you. Instead of complete obedience to God, you will find yourself receiving suggestions of things that might may seem easier to do than obey God. But it's far better to obey God. Amen. Oh yes. Jesus says I have got a plan for you. I've got a plan for you. My plan is that you will be with me because I love you. And that is my plan for you to be with me. Amen. To say that you're a Christian. Is more than saying, 
I belong to the Labour Party or the Conservative Party or whatever party they may be. Christianity is not a point of view. Christianity is not a, a suggestion. No. Christianity is a relationship. It's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And you who have committed your life to him. Hey, so he can run with it. Amen. You commit your life to him so you can run with it. Amen. How long have you asked Jesus for advice on anything? Amen. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the way uh, that involves commitment to him. Yes. Hey, so that he can, pump, he can control things in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Paul says, I live my life for the faith of the Son of God yes. who loves me and gave himself for me. Amen. Yes. That is the secret Amen. of the Christian life. He is the way. Amen. So how can we know the way? The way to know God and be comfortable with him is to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It means to hear God's voice and see him work in Jesus Christ. That's the way. It may sound simple to you. Yes. Amen. And people tend to back off and try to find something that's more complicated. Hey. Faith is simple. As Jonah saying, oh, I'm the man. Toss me overboard. Amen. He knew that he was dealing with God. Faith is as simple as the little boy saying, Jesus, here is my, my lunch. And use it to feed 5,000. Hallelujah. Faith is always simple and direct. Oh, praise the Lord. Sin is always complicated. Uh, amen. Sin is always complicated. Lots of if clauses to it. Uh, sin always leads to a detour. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, but Jesus is the way. And Jesus says, I've got a plan for you. Amen. Do you want to be part of that plan? Hallelujah. I have got a plan for you. Because whenever you die, that is not the end. It is just the beginning. It says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you're going to be also. God has plans for you that extends well into eternity. And because... This is so, you and I have to be very careful what we do that affects our eternal plan. Amen. You are not here on your own, but what you do have eternal issues. Paul says, behold, I show you a mystery. Ah, that's Paul. Regarding the resurrection. If you're here today. And you may not be so young. You may feel as though you're on your final leg. You're on the final leg of life. You're coming down. The final stretch. And you can't run as fast. As before. And do as much. As you used to do before. And you realize that life is running out for you. You don't have to be upset. No, you don't have to be upset at your current state. Because God has plans for you that reaches into eternity. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. So if you're running down in this life, don't worry. God has plans for you that reaches into eternity. Amen. Because he's gone to prepare a place for you and he wants you to be with him. And your name is on one of those many dwelling places yonder in glory. 
So be careful. Be careful what you do now. That has implications for eternity. Hallelujah. If you live for eternity, it will affect your conduct here on earth. Amen. Yes. Live in the light of his plans that include eternity. And so, in closing, I will ask you to make your choice. If you have never made a choice before, because soon it will be too late. Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Amen. And I pray that God through his Holy Spirit will use the celebration of the life of Sister Anne Moore to encourage those who do not know the Lord. Encourage even more those who don't know him. And I pray that you come in here today would bring faith into your life. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because the word of God is truth. And your word tells us that he will give us eternal life if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, I pray that you will create faith today uh, where faith is not present. And God, I pray that you will strengthen the faith of your children for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer today. God has plans for you. Plans beyond this life. Father in heaven, thank you for telling the truth about life and death. Lord, I pray today that you will help all those who have been misled by false teaching to believe what you say in the Bible. Lord, help mankind, those here, to even admit the wickedness in their hearts and to turn away from it. Lord, move us to trust in Jesus as our Savior from sins. And as the source of life eternal. Yes, oh God lead us by your word. And spirit. To enjoy whatever gifts you have given us. And to do what we can. With all our might to serve you like our sister. Lord I pray today that if. There's somebody here who came just to support. But Lord they heard something here today. When your word declares that. These things are written that you may have life. And you may have it more abundantly. That's right. He is the way. He came to give you life in all of its abundance. Touch someone's life today on this funeral day. Oh God. Another opportunity to let men know that they can be saved. And that they can have one of those mansions. Yes. In glory. Number one, Glory Avenue, over that. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. That can be yours. Oh, praise the Lord. You can claim it today because Jesus has implemented yes. whatever plans. It's not like our plans. No. Oh, yes. Never he never personally going to implement those plans. To so touch somebody. If somebody knows, yes, all you have to do is receive him. He says, confess with your mouth. The Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart. We're not talking here about religion. But we're talking about do you know Christ? Yes. And if you know him. And you made a decision like that today. Wherever you live. Just find a Bible believing church. And they will be able to instruct you further. Yes. It says repent and be baptized. Yes. As you go further on with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so Lord we thank you. For our sister. And the plans you've had. Not just for her. But for all of us. She's already gone on to part of her plans. May us who are alive do our best to continue. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're just going to have a prayer for the family. Pastor, we just come and say a prayer for the family at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. As we get ready to pray, I, Pastor Lewis, have already extended. Um, 
condolences to the family and all the church's behalf, especially on behalf of us, a child of Tottenham, and my, my family, my wife and, and myself, we're great friends. I don't know. The husband is such a lovely, lovely, lovely man. Amen. Amen. And what your wife had is something which the world needs. I'm going from here today to, to spread it. Iran needs it. Israel needs it. The Prime Minister of America needs it. Of, of England needs it. And President of America, the world leaders. She had peace. She's a peacemaker. Amen. Oh God. Father, Amen. we thank you today. Amen. We thank you, Father, Amen. for our sister Amen. and what she had because that was the legacy you left. Amen. You didn't leave money and clothes and houses and land when you were going. But you said, my peace, I, live I leave with you. That is the world give. Amen. And Lord, she extended it. She received it. And now she has given it to the family. And so today I pray for the family. Amen. I pray for every one of them. Amen. From the husband. Amen. Right down. Amen. The children and grandchildren. And every family member. And we all are family. Amen. So I pray Lord for all of us. But for the closely related family today. Amen. That we will follow in the footsteps of our sister. And that, Lord, your comfort, that comfort which you have given to people over the years in times of bereavement and of loss, deep loss. I pray for that comfort for them right now. You will carry them at this point in time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, I believe we're going to have a viewing of the body. Um, so you're gonna have a viewing. The funeral directors can come along, and we want to view it orderly, please. Um, we will, we probably we start at the back. If you want to view those at the back on this side, can come along first. Then you just view and you just walk along, please. Don't hang on, hang on. You just move along. So we have time, conscious, and then the back. Start at the back, and then we have this side. Okay. So when when they're ready. And then you can just play, Oh Lord of oh God. I think that's the play that song while stay.
Good afternoon, you all. Welcome to the second part of today's proceedings. As we are about to lay to rest, our dear sister Anne Mo. Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and then there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like this. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God of his mercy to take back to himself the soul of our beloved Anne Mo, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, the sure and certain hope that the spirit which has returned unto God who gave it will be reunited with her resurrected body at the second coming of Christ. When the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We're gonna pray, Pastor General, can you come and pray this time? Okay, let's all hand together because we are in this together. Our oh, Father and our oh God, we thank you for your presence. Lord, as we stand to do the final rites today, we thank you for your hand that is not shorter. Because there is no place or position the enemy could place us that your hand cannot reach us. We are always within reach. Amen. Just as our face differ, the need, the pain differs. But you are the all-encompassing God. And so today we pray you will strengthen God, especially the family, in the inner man, in the power of your might. Let there be a surge. Let there be wave after wave of your awesome supernatural glory that will rise in them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And before we cover up, there's, if there's anything you want to put in there now, roses or some dirt who would like to, please do so now. And then we can continue singing. The next one on here is Marching to Zion. Come with that love the Lord. Marching to Zion. See you later.
We're going to give Bishop the mic now. And he's going to start up something up in here. Somebody put your hands together for the Bishop. Somebody say, yeah. and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Go in peace. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Keeping it again. One more round. <laughs> 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 <laughs>